So the semi-final fixtures of the Rugby World Cup have come to a close. The South Africans getting themselves to win 16 points to 15 over England in what was a hard-fought victory that narrowly went the way of the box. Now this contest could have gone either way. It was the 77th minute penalty kick from Andre Pollard that helped the box get the lead. Also the try from Argy Snayman in the 68th. That was the only try we saw throughout this game. England getting the four penalties and also a drop kick. So that is the second game now in this World Cup that the English have been kept as a trialist team. But throughout this review, we're going to be looking through at the key stats of this contest and also looking at what maybe went wrong for these two sides at times throughout the 80 minutes. But first of all, leading tackler in this contest, it was Franco Mostert. The man is a workhorse and he proved it. Time and time again throughout this game, making a lot of crucial tackles. The English, they didn't try and run that ball too much. It was a lot of kicking between these two sides. And that was the natural English kicking game. But anytime England tried to run it, first man there was Franco Mostert. Most running meters actually came from Courtney Laws with 41. Most offloads, Alice Genge. And then the most carries over the game line was six for Tom Curry. And that was the highest that we saw. The possession stat, 56% in favour of England with 55% of territory going the way of the Springboks. But looking at this contest, it was not the same type of Springboks performance that we have seen throughout the rest of this Rugby World Cup. They decided to go with a very heavy kicking game. I believe kicks in play, we saw about 50 between these two sides. In fact, more than that, we saw 41 from England, 28 from South Africa. So around 1,700 metres kicked throughout this contest compared to the 188 metres carried by South Africa and the 227 by the English. But overall, South Africa, they were getting lured into playing that kicking game up against the English, which wasn't helping them early on, definitely because they did start Kovas Reinach and Mani Libok. So it would have made perfect sense to be the more aggressive side, go for that running game. Libok got subbed off at 32 minutes. And to be honest, I don't think Libok theoretically played that bad of a game of rugby, he just wasn't allowed to play his natural game. The coaches obviously drilled it into him, we're kicking every chance that we get, so you have to be the one who kicks that ball towards the opposition. And I think that if Marnie Libok had been allowed to run that ball, could have been a whole different story early on for the Springboks. But once Pollard came on the field, he brought a lot more stability into their side. Same with Fuff de Klerk, replacing Reinach, although Reinach as well was told that he had to kick the ball as often as physically possible. But yeah, only that 188 running meters for the Springboks. Jesse Creel touched the ball once. He dropped it. When it went to him, he probably wasn't expecting to be able to receive it. Cheslin Colby, the only time he got the chance was when they were going for up and unders and also that cross kick from Andre Pollard, which was actually the best chance for the Springboks to score a try throughout the early stages of the second half. But England not being able to score tries, like I mentioned, the second game so far, in this Rugby World Cup, in the first match up against Argentina, it didn't cost them. But in this game up against the Springboks, it certainly did. They needed to find more points, only getting three throughout the second half. That was Owen Farrell's drop kick, which led to the points being put on the board. Penalty count in this game, all throughout the live stream, we heard a lot about the referee in terms of who he was in favour of. The penalty count in the end, 11 penalties against England compared to the eight against the South Africans. Now, there was a little patch where South Africa were very ill-disciplined in the middle of the first half. They will want to definitely improve that as they make their way towards the final to take on the All Blacks. England, in those big moments when they needed to make it count when receiving penalties, they did so in the first half, not so much in the second, but that is due to the better discipline that we saw from the Springboks, I believe only giving away the two penalties throughout the second 40 minutes. But defensively, 101 tackles made by South Africa, 90 made by England, so relatively even in that department, but nowhere near as many phases put together by these two sides as we saw from their last outings. Also, a big notable mention for the Springbok scrum. It was absolutely fantastic when Ox Nishan made his way onto the field alongside Vincent Cock. They had that real impact at set piece, and so much so that they did take a mark and call for the scrum, similar to what we saw in their last contest with Damien Valimza, Vili LaRue doing that same tactic. So for England, their next game, they will be going to hit deep with Argentina in the Rugby World Cup third place playoff game. And then the winners of this contest, South Africa, they are going to hit deep with New Zealand. 
two sides that have got three World Cups in the cabinet. Is it going to be back-to-back -back for the defending champs or will the Kiwis get themselves a win and walk away with their World Cup? Those are the questions, but we will soon have the answers, of course. Anyone who is new to the channel, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. We're doing the commentary for those two matches on the channel alongside the URC, which has recently started up. Do let me know what you think of this game as well in the comments down below, and I will see you all for the next one.